Yeah, I think it's battery operated. <laughs> Good, how are you doing? Good, you look good. You felt, this is the best you felt. Go ahead. Good. Oh, good. Yeah, you know, even though it wasn't a full set clips here, that was still pretty. Yeah, the first five minutes, so five minutes, so that's Really? Oh, good. I've heard about it, but I've never seen it. Yeah. Wow. No kidding. Oh, good. Good morning. Great to see everybody here today. Uh, as you can see by the clock, we're having early service today. So, for our announcements, now first of all, we want to welcome anybody here who are guests. We are, are honored. Uh, we are honored for those who are watching us on uh, YouTube and Facebook. We want you to know that not only are we honored that you're watching our service today, but that anything that goes on here at the church, you're welcome to be a part of the uh, different activities that happen here. On April 24th, uh, we're going to be having why well, we're now calling the next step that we've completed launching into the future, and that this is where we're going to start uh, discussing what kind of, uh, we'll be looking at the different categories of ministry possibilities, which is uh, partnership with our churches and organizations, uh, homebound hunger, support groups, and faith and prayer groups as to what kind of ministries God is asking us. Also on May 19th will be Pentecost Sunday, and something to just really encourage uh, those who are of the male persuasion is to come to the Tuesday evening Bible study at Christ First. It's at 630. So if you have any inclination of coming to that, please feel free to do so. And then Lori has an announcement. Good morning. Um, just want to give an update on the blessing box pantry out front. Um, so we have people that are stocking it. We're stocking every day. Um, and so right now, um, people are taking multiple days a week so that we can make sure we cover that every day. So we're pretty good on that side of things. Um, but with the number of people that we're serving out of it, we need donations because some of our supply of food is getting low. Um, so donations of either the food items. Um, if you look at the church Facebook page, there's a, a post that went out yesterday that has a list of um, some of the very popular items that we're putting in there. Um, or monetary donations because we do have people available to go like to Sam's Club and purchase like bulk quantities of things. So. Um, we are just needing donations to, to keep stocking that. Um, I think in general we're seeing um, at least two or three people every day and as many as five people coming and, and being served out of the box. So we don't know what's going to happen when school gets out, if that's going to increase. This will be our first summer, so we'd like to be well prepared for that. So any donations, greatly appreciated. So some of the really popular things, the uh, macaroni and cheese cups go very quickly. Uh, so do the cans of like SpaghettiOs, ravioli, the, anything with the pop top cans or like individual size servings it seems. We have box macaroni and cheese dinners that s have been there for weeks, but every day the cup ones go. So um, it seems that it's more individual serving type things, the peanut butter and crackers, cheese and crackers, protein bars, that kind of stuff seems to go very quickly too. Um, I just discovered yesterday at Walmart that you can actually get um, vegetables in the little plastic cups like the fruit cups come in. So I put some of those in there just to try and see how the vegetables go. I didn't know you could get those in the individual size ones, but we'll see how that works. 
Um, I think that there are a few things showing up in there that I didn't recognize as coming out of our cabinet. So I think that there are some people dropping off maybe a few cans of stuff directly into there. So, um, and other than the one Friday night that it got completely wiped out, baskets and all, um, we, we're not having people just coming in and taking everything. So I think, not this Friday, but um, on Good Friday, actually, someone took everything that was in the box, including the little plastic baskets that were holding some of the items and stuff, so it got completely wiped out. But that's the only time that we've had that happen, so most people um, are, I think, being pretty respectful of it. So anyway, we just need donations, so thank you. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? If there are no other announcements, then let us now have our prelude. Good morning. Good morning. This is my father's world. Is that not perfect for this Sunday after a total eclipse? One of God's wonderful, wonderful natures. I, I was in Dallas, Texas, where it was totality. And I was even so fortunate to see what they call the diamond right after I'm not sure if it's total right after the total eclipse or just as it starts moving off. But if never, if you've never heard about the diamond, read up on your eclipse, and you'll be able to uh, see. It. I said, I even imagine it as um, the star of Bethlehem when Christ was born. It's just almost blinded by the light, although it's so far away had to share that with you this morning. For the call to worship, uh, actually I'm doing a meditation that I often do, and particularly now as we're moving forward and looking at what our church will be. 
It is a song. It's a Christian rock song. Mark Gershmel of the White Heart Christian Band wrote this song. And if you don't recognize the words, I bet you would, would recognize the tune or the melody. And I, I did not get this set in my mind until yesterday, or I might have tried to have it put in, uh, have the music put in today. It's called, We Are As Hands. We are his hands, we are his feet, we are his people. Children of the Lord, we share the hope, we share the dream. Believers in Jesus, children of the King. We are his hands, his spirit lives within us, flowing like a river, filling us with strength. Strength so that we can reach out for other, for our brother, help one another. Some of us build, some of us are teachers. Some can sing like angels. But all of us can love like he loved, pure and simple, so warm and gentle. Once again, the chorus, we are his hands, we are his feet, we are the people, children of the Lord. We share the hope, we share the dream. We, believers are we in Jesus, children of the King. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we who are gathered here this delightful spring morning, thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to see our friends, to have a church family, to have a church home, to be to be welcomed by you as your people. We come to be renewed by your spirit through singing, praying, learning what is the next step toward carrying out our pledged purpose and mission. In a way, Father, we want to do that which pleases you in sharing your beloved Son Jesus is love. The call to worship was a timely and true reminder. We are your friends. We are your feet. We are your people. And if I may add, we are your voice. May all that we do now as members of First Christian Church, Bonner Springs, and in the future, be to your glory. This we pray in your beloved Son's name. Amen. Will you stand?
seated. So we come to a time of concerns and joys of the church. So I can share with you these concerns. Continue prayers for Lauren and Jean Brown. They are making progress. And so indeed, um, we are happy that they're doing well. Uh, Jean was at the Tuesday morning uh, Bible study group. And it was wonderful to see her. And um, again, Lauren came out, out of a major surgery, and we're just grateful that uh, that has gone well. Then the next one says, Leanne caught whatever Oliver had and has been sick as a dog for two days. So we're sorry to hear that. So is it like a flu? Okay. Well, again, we're sorry and tell her that we'll be praying for her. Okay. Okay. So that's, if you didn't hear um, David, is that, you know, she's an Energizer Bunny. I think um, uh, one time, I forget, oh, you, one time you said that she was a type A plus and that, um, that she's been laying up flat on her back. Hopefully, it's not that something serious. I mean, it is serious, but it's not super serious. So let's be sure to be praying for her. Yes, that David doesn't get it. And then also, uh, a cousin of mine, Tisa Patterson, uh, has had long COVID. And that it's, they've called in hospice. And that so she's probably, well, she's not going to make it. So... Just uh, pray for Tisa and her family to pray that um, it will be a peaceful and comfortable time for her and also to be uh, for her two brothers and uh, her, her children and her husband, as well as anybody else who knows her well. So uh, again, her name is Tisa Patterson. And then also, as Jane pointed out, we have a lot to be thankful for with that beautiful sunshine. And this weather has been great. One of the things that, uh, for, at least for me, when it comes to heat, if you have humidity low, then I don't mind it as much, but it's when you get that humidity. And I was out walking last night and um, hardly sweated at all. So I, I'm grateful, and I know the rest of you are grateful for this weather. 
But we're grateful for every day that God gives us. And so uh, even if it's, things are not going well in our lives, I, I know that you're the sort of folks that uh, have gratitude and can be able to see ways that God is blessing us even when things are difficult. But also thank God when things are going well as in those situations. So let's now bow our heads for, a, you can, go ahead. Sure. Quite serious. Yes. And, you know, I've never seen this world like this. Okay. So be praying for the people of Israel. Yes. And then, Ka and then, um, Kathy? Yeah. Right. And then the people of Gaza as well. So people of Israel, people of Gaza, and David. Yes. So this is, uh, he brought up that uh, a, a prayer of appreciation uh, for the decoration that Sharon does year round up front. Um, I, I know that we all appreciate it, Sharon. We may never tell you until now, but we really do appreciate it. And I know that there's been some Sundays I just will walk in or even during the week and, and it gives me inspiration. So, and I, I know I'm not alone in saying that. And then secondly, a nephew of David uh, is he and his, what you say, four boys? A wife and four boys. <laughs> Reminds me of my family. <laughs> you know, I know that my parents were saints because there were four of us kids, three boys and a girl, and we had vacations every year, and I don't know how they did it. But anyway, so the prayers for uh, his nephew and his wife and four boys, they're going from Massachusetts down to South Carolina for vacation, so that's exciting. So let's now have a few moments of silent prayer. What a joy it is, dear God, right now to hear the sound of children, and to hear the quiet whisper, the quiet moan. And indeed, we pray, dear God, that whether it's for this church, whether it's for other churches, that we somehow reach out into the community for children right now that don't know even who you are or have any clue who you are. 
But dear God, that that prayer not only goes for children that I've come to understand that that's not just true for children or youth, but it's also true for many adults. And so I pray, dear God, that as we are look, moving into the next step, that we have in mind, and that it's not just lip service, but that we are actually being serious about reaching out into the Bonner Springs community to truly spread your love and to witness what that love is about, which, of course, is the risen Jesus Christ, whom we celebrated his resurrection just a couple of Sundays ago. Indeed, we pray, dear God, for what's going on in the Middle East. We pray, dear God, for the safety of Israel. We pray, dear God, that the, the aid it will start coming in at a greater, faster pace for the people in Gaza. And we pray, dear God, for Leanne. We know that for her just to be bedridden is not her jam. And we just pray, dear God, that this is something temporary, that she can get well quickly. And we pray, dear God, for David's nephew and wife and four sons as they have the trip down to South Carolina. We just pray, dear God, that it will be just a very memorable and fun-filled trip. And I pray, dear God, for my cousin Tisa as she is in her final stretch. As I said a few moments ago, I just pray that it will be a peaceful one and that she'll receive comfort. We pray, dear God, that Lauren will continue to recover well from his surgery. We're grateful, dear God, for the progress that has happened, and we just pray that that will continue. We pray, dear God, for other folks here in this church that have their joys and that they have their struggles. I pray, dear God, that we will truly be there for each other as well as to be there for other folks outside this church. And I, dear God, I'm excited for the next step, the next phase that we have in now deciding exactly what direction, what kind of ministries are you asking us to pursue. And I pray, dear God, it's the ministries that you want, not what we want. There's going to be important decisions made. And it's tempting, dear God, to be thinking in terms of what we want and not what you want. And that's why it's important that we all show up and that we all have fun in making that decision, but we know that it's a serious decision, one that we pray and hope will fit into the purpose that you've given to this church that is to spread your love. Help us, dear God, live by the prayer that your son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy laws demands could my 
zeal, no respite, no. Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul to the fountain fly wash me savior or i die while i draw this fleeting breath when mine eyes shall close in death when i soar to worlds unknown see Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. The scripture reading today is from Acts 4, verses 23 through 31. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God, saying, Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father, David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against the anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand what should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Thus, saith the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate it. So, some silly jokes. A couple about support groups, and another one has nothing to do with that. So the first one is that I formed a group for agoraphobia, the fear of going outside. But it didn't work because everybody wanted to be in their own place. What do you call a support group for people who talk too much? On and on and on anonymous. And where do polar bears keep their money? In a snowbank. <laughs> At least I tried. So I'm just going to review in terms of what we have covered so far in recent time. 
that in October and November of 2022, we came up with the purpose and mission of this church. And go ahead and pull out your bulletins unless you got it memorized. And on the front of your bulletin, you have the purpose and mission of the church. And so with great enthusiasm, say, what is our purpose? And then what is our mission? And I, I'm going to keep doing this periodically from off and on because while that often happens with churches and different organizations, they come up with a purpose and mission and then they just put it aside. I think that the purpose and mission that God has given to us makes sense. I think it's something that applies to us. I think it's something that God wants us to be mindful of as we go about doing God's work. And so the second thing that we did during launching into the future is that last year we spent time looking into what possible ministries God might be asking us. And so then last fall, we, uh, it, it, we had a vote in which you, the folks, chose five categories of possible ministries. And those five categories were uh, was a partnership with other organizations, support groups, uh, prayer and faith groups, homebound, and hunger. Now, we're going to have a new phase, and the new phase is called the next step, in which now that we've gone through the discernment process, we're now going to decide what kind of ministries God wants us to pursue out of the five categories of possible ministries. And so we're going to meet on August, excuse me, August, April 24th at 7 p.m. And that is what's really important as we meet is that we be mindful of the Spirit. Not be mindful of what we want, but what God wants. So let me give you an example of what I am thinking of in terms of how we go approaching this. Is that I'm drawn to support groups and to prayer and faith groups. And so in terms of support groups, I've been thinking quite a bit lately about starting up a chronic pain group or a group that deals with trauma. And that I've been in conversation with uh, a ministry, a faith-based group that deals with folks and organizations and churches that want to address the issue of trauma. And it's called the Healing Trauma Center. So that's one example of where I'm leaning towards in terms of uh, pursuing one of the five categories of possible ministries. Then also, I'm also attracted to uh, faith and prayer groups. And one of the things that I've been thinking and praying about, and this is not an original idea of mine, I got this from Andy Fraser, the former pastor at uh, the Bonner Springs United Methodist Church, and it's called the Doubters Club. There are a lot of people that would like to come here to church, that, that might want to come to church, but they have questions, they have doubts, and they are afraid to raise those questions and doubts and, because many churches don't allow that to happen. And so I would love to see some sort of doubters club be opened up to folks that are curious about Christ, they are curious about the Christian faith, and that we really should be welcoming people to ask questions and to share doubts, and that we do so in a non-judgmental way. Wyandotte and Johnson counties have many support groups. Family, eating disorder, weight loss, mental health, addictions, single moms, grief, and the list goes on. And that in regards to faith and prayer groups, there's all kinds of examples of uh, prayer and faith groups that goes on in different groups, uh, different communities. There are communities that ha where uh, people from different denominations get together and they spend time praying for their community. 
There are also in different communities where folks from different denominations get together and they study God's word. Now you don't have to join. That you can offer support by just say, for example, bringing refreshments or stop to visit or send a note of encouragement or offer prayer. So I'm gonna come back in a few moments and talk about support groups and, and, and talk about faith and prayer groups in a few moments. But for now, we're gonna look at today's Bible lesson. And that in order to understand what Jane read just a few moments ago, we need to begin with chapter one in the book of Acts. And that in chapter one, the disciples, they are in hiding. They are uncertain what to do. And they're in hiding because they're fearful for their life because they saw what happened to their leader, Jesus. But then Jesus shows up and then he assures them that there'll come a day that they will be blessed with the Holy Spirit and that they will have the courage and boldness to go out and spread the great news. And indeed that happens. That in chapter two, it's the story of Pentecost, which is often referred to as the birthday of the church. And that on that day, the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, that they went from hiding to going out into the community, out into Jerusalem, and out to the surrounding area and sharing the great news of Jesus Christ. Peter, one of the disciples, preaches to the crowd, a crowd that's very skeptical and wondering what is going on with these disciples. And what he does is that he tells them as to who Jesus is and that as a result, 3,000 people were baptized that day. And so then at the end of chapter two, we see that this community has dramatically grown and that during, at the end of chapter 2, they're experiencing fellowship. They're eating together. They're studying Hebrew scripture and making sure that everybody's needs are being met. At the beginning of chapter 3 in the book of Acts, we see where Peter heals a man and continues, both John and he, continue to speak about Jesus. And what happens is that this disturbs the religious authorities and they call in Peter and John because they have questions and that the authorities ask, by what authority and power do you have to do what you do? And so Peter then responds about who Jesus is. The religious authorities, which is uh, known as the Sanhedrin, told them that they are to never speak about Jesus ever again. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I read that, that passage, I kind of just have to laugh. It's like, these folks, there's no way you're going to hold them back. They've been through a lot. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. They're warned and ready to go, whatever the consequences might be. And so they defy the Sanhedrin. And then finally they're released. And so now we get to today's story. Peter and John went back to their own people and report their encounter with the Sanhedrin. And here's what's interesting. And this is, I think, the key part for today's Bible lesson is that the group, the group of Jesus' followers, raised their voice in prayer. They didn't go, oh my, we, uh, we've got to back off. No, they raised their voice in prayer. Their prayer acknowledged that God made the heaven, the earth, and the sea. They quote from Psalms that they would have the courage to oppose those uh, religious authorities. In verse 29 it says, Now, Lord, consider the threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Then say great timid, timidity, then said with great boldness. 
Then say, hey, Lord, help us have a better hiding place away from our opponents. Instead, they said, give us the boldness to speak your word. And indeed, that is a prayer that I would hope we're all praying right now at this very moment. If we haven't, I encourage you to do so. The group prayed for boldness to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of our holy servant, Jesus. As a group, they want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue Jesus' work despite the constant threats. This group is an excellent example of people who love Jesus, work together, serve others, and reach the world. The passage beautifully closes. After they prayed, where they gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking God's word with boldness and confidence. What we hear in Acts is an example of a support group and a faith and prayer group. These were folks that were meeting to support each other, that they were giving each other encouragement, saying, let's not give up, because they knew that they were misunderstood and that they were under threat. Instead of backing away from these problems, they acted as a prayer group. They prayed for boldness to spread the word of Jesus. It's quite remarkable to read of their courage and tenacity. We know support groups who have provided a transforming experience for many. I'll give you, three, uh, give you a, a few examples. Number one is that I suspect that most of us know of somebody who's gone through Alcoholics Anonymous and have remained recovered from their addiction. Another example that, uh, I, I, that I've talked about is Celebrate Recovery. That Celebrate Recovery is a faith-based ministry that not only helps people with their addictions, but also with their hurts, uh, hang-ups, and bad habits. And I know from personal experience in, in, in other communities that I've been in as to how Celebrate Recovery uh, has made a difference because of how people turn their uh, hurts and habits and hang-ups over to Christ. Also, over the years in my ministry, and dealing uh, with folks who are uh, experiencing grief, they have shared with me as to how they have gone through grief support group and how these grief support groups have helped them get through the worst of their grief. And then for me personally, I've gone through both support groups and prayer and faith groups that have had a tremendous impact upon my life. And the community that I served is that, and I've never been to a community where I had this kind of blessing, is that there was one group of clergy that I would go to and that we would sh give support to each other in sharing our joys and the struggles that we were experiencing. Then there was another clergy group that what we did is that we would pray for each other and also our churches and community. And then with the third group, was really a combination of support group and prayer and faith group. And that this group really pushed me in terms of going deeper into my faith and that this is a group I'm deeply uh, grateful for and will always have great fondness for them for, for how they helped me accountable, gave me encouragement to know that I'm not alone in my struggles. It's a chance to be a part of a support group, to be a part of a prayer and faith group, that I shouldn't say I, but that I should say we, is that this is an opportunity to be held accountable, to be encouraged, to know that what we have, what we're experiencing, is not something that we're enduring alone. And in fact, we don't have to endure it alone, that we got people that will be on our side. 
It's a chance to grow as a person and to help overcome problems and to have fun and socialize and most of all be drawn closer to Christ. I know that many of you have watched the show The Chosen, but for those of you not familiar with the show The Chosen, The Chosen is about the story of Jesus. And that really Jesus and disciples, they were a form of support group and prayer and faith groups. They came from varied backgrounds and didn't always get along. One of the things that you would see, and it's true in scripture, but this really comes to life, is that they were competitive with each other. They were competitive for Jesus' attention and praise. What is beautiful is that Jesus created his disciples into a community. Jesus helped his disciples to see the goodness and value, uh, 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 value each of them brought. Jesus helped his disciples to grow spiritually. We read many times that as a group, the disciples gathered for prayer. And after Jesus' ascension into heaven, the disciples continued to support each other and pray for Christ's guidance and power. Again, I want to be very clear that I'm right now just suggesting as to what possi possible ways that you can get involved as we look at the five categories of ministry possibilities. I'm not saying that you have to be part of a support group or that you have to be part of a, a faith, and, uh, faith and a prayer group. But I just want uh, all of us to be thinking about where might God be guiding us because next week, I'll be talking about how might we be ministering to those who are homebound or experiencing hunger, which we're talking about, which we've already started doing uh, through the blessing box. We know that people are looking for something in their lives that gives them meaning, something that will give them an anchor. And that's why it's so important that we, as we go about doing the next step, that we be mindful that this is not for the survival of First Christian Church, but that this is for the thrival. That's a word I'm making up, the thrival. For thriving in Jesus Christ to bring about the good news to those who don't know it, who are not anchored in Christ. One of the things that I used to say in other churches is that this is not your church. This is not my church. This is God's church. And when we start thinking that way, it changes everything. And so, I'm not, I don't know how people refer to this church, but I encourage you that if you say it's the preacher's church or if you say it's your church, I encourage you to break that habit and to start thinking about being God's church and that changes everything in terms of how we approach doing God's work here in Bonner Springs and beyond. Let us now bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving God, I understand that for some folks, and maybe for many folks, that there may be a certain element of nervousness as to where we might be going as a church or where, where we will be going as a church. But I pray, dear God, that we will open ourselves up to your joy, to your excitement, to your enthusiasm, knowing that there's something exciting that you're opening up for us and that we don't need to be afraid, but that we need to be curious and that we need to be excited as to what we can be able to do because, dear God, it's not about what the numbers are. It's not about who the people are because you will work through each person, that you'll work through each resource and make it into something abundant. And so I pray, dear God, that we live in that kind of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See
The final time that Jesus met with his disciples before his arrest, and later on be crucified, is that before the meal began, he lifted up a loaf of bread, and he broke it in half. And he says, this represents my broken body. Whenever you eat of it, do so in memory of me. Then he lifted up a cup of wine and he blessed it. He says, this cup represents the blood that will be shed for all of humankind for the forgiveness of people's sins. This is the covenant. This is the promise I make that I'll be with you until the end of time. Please pray with me. What a beautiful day you've given us today. The sunshine, 
the flowers blowing in the wind, remind us of your love for each of us. This bread that we take today that symbolizes the body of your son's broken body on that cruel cross for us, for each of us. What a gift that is. Please give us the courage and the motivation to be bold, to share this good news, not only of that sacrifice, but of the love and salvation that it brings. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we continue to pray, we are so thankful for this cup that you taught us how to take. We're so thankful that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus down here on earth to be with us and to die on the cross and to have this wine to help us to remember your love. Help us as we go forward with prayer groups and love and strength that we continue to share everything you taught us to others in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please pray with me. Father, we're grateful for the blessed assurance that you give each of us. The assurance of salvation and eternal life with you. Help us to use these gifts freely given to share that good news with others in the community and around the world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just as a quick reminder, there is an elders meeting after worship. 
And then also Tuesday at Men's Bible Study Group, plus the other groups that meet throughout the week. And the Men's Bible Study Group is at Christ First Church at 6.30. Let us now pray. Loving God, we're just grateful for this time to be here. For many of us, dear God, it'd be easy for us to take the easy route. But what we hear in today's scripture, and especially when we read through the book of Acts, is that we are challenged, dear God, to not take the easy route, but to be bold and to have be filled with your spirit and to enthusiastically go out into the community and spread your love in a world that needs it so desperately. So may we, in our small and quiet way, be able to do that, both as a church and as individual disciples. And together we all say, Amen. Amen.